what is going on everyone and welcome back to outriders so it is officially launch day worldwide for all systems and i know many of you are already playing or so excited to play this is all you think about all day all night all the time therefore today's quest is to help those with the first well let's really just call it the second official boss in the game called the molten akari so this video will discuss some strategies and tips to hopefully make that fight easier for you outriders that may be struggling a little bit with this boss fight now i will be posting a lot more content guides tips end game builds legendary farming methods and more here on this channel so if you don't want to miss out be sure to become a subscriber by simply tapping that subscribe and like button thank you so much for the follow outrider and let's get started okay so like i said the molten akari is the second official boss and is honestly quite challenging if you don't know what i'm about to share with you now before i get into the tips just know that these recommendations come from world tier level six where i stupidly ran in with a sniper full auto shotgun and revolver but somehow still managed to defeat the akari all right so first and foremost if you go through this guide and you're still having trouble what i would recommend is that you ultimately just reduce your world tier level so if you happen to start the battle at world tier level six then you could reduce it to world tier level five now be warned that if you reduce your level the progression you made for your current level will be removed so if you're very close to level seven then that is something that you may want to deeply consider ultimately with the world tier level reduced yes the boss will be a lot easier but the loot you may get from the akari will not be as good as it would be at a higher world tier level again this is the worst case scenario but i just wanted to throw it out there for you guys to know all right so next let's shift our attention to the actual fight itself there are three phases of this fight as indicated by the health bars for the spider each one represents a different phase that comes with a different version of the spider and of course different attacks the spider will use for the first phase, you're mainly close range with the spider, avoiding his jump and slam attack that has a huge radius which you should always roll out immediately. Following up with quick shots to the abdomen is where the weak points are for the spider and the damage difference is really big so make sure you're always always attacking that spot. Next the spider will do a smaller jump but remain in the same location which causes lava damage within a small radius but also sends walls of lava in multiple directions. All you need to do is be aware of where these are by looking for the blue indicators on the ground and staying out of them. Again, this is a perfect time to shoot the abdomen up close if you happen to actually dodge the attack. Lastly, during the first phase, the spider, if very close to you, will take two swipes at you, which are pretty simple to dodge, followed by more shots to those abdomen. I found that during the first phase, you definitely want to remain close in front of the Akari, constantly shooting the abdomen, but trying to walk backwards as much as possible while you're taking your shots, so that way you're keeping your distance and he can't hit you with that two-piece. Now, if you follow these tips for the first phase, it should remove that first health bar pretty fast. During the second phase the akari will go into the lava and little spiderlings will spawn as well if you're low on health or only have half your bar from automatically healing this is a perfect time to heal up from these spiderlings depending on your class and how it heals for example playing with the trickster i know to get close to the spiderlings and then kill them thus replenishing a decent amount of my health now these spiders will be available for the rest of the fight so you can rely on them for healing and for the ammo that they actually drop the only thing that changes during phase 2 is the spider will then jump on the surrounding walls and shoot lava all over the battle arena in which I recommend you immediately stop shooting and run around making sure you don't stay in any of the blue circles. Once the Akari returns to the ground continue to attack the abdomen as well. Now you'll also notice that during the second phase the spider's abdomen will get bigger and it'll start to have these sort of lava sores that you'll see on the back. It'll also go over to the pool of the lava on the side of the battle arena and start drinking it and then it'll use that lava to spit out of the back of its abdomen when it's on the ground as well again you just need to make sure that you're staying out of these lava spots and when the spider or the molten akari is actually drinking from the lava this is actually a decent time to run up and try to get some of those abdomen shots on those weak points from the side if you stand very very close to the lava pools now of course this is also a good time to heal if you need to heal by killing those spiderlings around you lastly is the third phase which seems very difficult but is actually easier than the first two first starters the spider will run into the lava and then transform into a molten lava bobbit worm of sorts that stays in the middle of the map immediately when this phase is up be ready to see blue indicators on the ground as the worm will send the walls of lava where these are and rotate meaning they will move now the very important key to this is to make sure that you follow the blue lines immediately but you want to make sure that you keep a good distance as well 
If you're too close, the floor will still cause damage to you from the lava, even though you're not technically in the wall of lava. Now, this is a big, big mistake I made from the very get go. I got to the third and final stage, and then I saw the blue lines and I stayed very close to them because I didn't want the other blue line behind me to catch up. And as a result, I got a lot of that burn damage from the lava on the floor. So again, just make sure you keep your distance, but always follow those blue lines. Now, as you continue to follow the blue line until it stops, and then you can turn around and attack the body of the worm speaking on attacking the final form simply shoot the body that is sticking out of the ground now i haven't found any specific weakness spots on this final form and the head is too high up to target so you can continuously just run around and shoot the body when you can lastly the final form will throw lava in a big area next to you which is obvious from the big blue indicators on the ground the akari should do this to your right and to your left as well so all you need to do is avoid these and go back to shooting the body of the final form also the spiderlings will still be chasing after you during this fight so you can use that to gain some health and some ammo as you go but don't shift your attention solely from the boss to them as the amount of damage they do is nowhere near the akari does next let's discuss what weapons i would personally recommend you use in this boss fight First, you should absolutely have an assault rifle of some sorts, even a submachine gun would do. While fighting the Akari, you need to be medium to long range, especially for your abilities and your weapons. Therefore, do not by any means bring a shotgun to this fight as it probably won't turn out that well. Now, if you happen to be running through level by level and dismantling or selling every single weapon and armor piece that you have besides the ones that you're using like I was, Remember, you can always go back to the shop by fast traveling and then you can buy an assault rifle or a submachine gun if you absolutely need them. Moving on after this, I would recommend you dismantle everything except one of each weapon for boss encounters like this. Next, a sniper rifle works very well because when the Akari is on the wall or maybe you need to create some space or distance between you guys, you can take those powerful shots at the weak points on the Akari and deal some significant damage. Now, of course, I would recommend that you have a semi-automatic rifle instead if you can because when you ADS you're going to want to keep an eye on the attacks that the Akari is throwing at you. Now if you're ADSing down a sniper's scope it may be hard or difficult to keep track of the blue indicators around you or where the Akari is attacking or using its skill. Remember for this fight you really don't want to be hit more than once at a time by the Akari as it will potentially kill you. Speaking of this don't get greedy when taking shots, take your time, make sure your shots hit and always remember movement is going to be everything with a fight like this. What I have found most useful with the rifles are hitting the spider on its weak point which is right on the abdomen where it has a little bubble because if you take this off underneath is the spider's weak point and hitting this with a sniper or semi-automatic rifle is really good for dishing out big damage during the fight. Now last but not least is your sidearm which I depended on quite a bit for this fight. Now unlike the first boss fight that had an ammo crate sitting in the back, this fight requires you to kill the little spiderling mobs during the second phase of the fight which will spawn from the lava. These spiderlings will drop ammo for you to replenish with and that is the only opportunity to do so. With this being said, every time I fought the spider I found myself relying on my sidearm since the ammo is unlimited. Therefore revolvers work great for bigger damage, but again remember that this is always an option if you're low or out of ammo. Lastly are the abilities you should be using. Now each class should have a skill that adds anomaly damage to their shots such as the blighted rounds with the technomancer. These are great for using with this battle as it's really a weapon damage battle from the start unless you're a technomancer of course. Now I would make sure that you have these skills equipped and always use them when the cooldown is done to add some significant damage to the Akari especially at the weak points. Now besides these use any ability that is medium to long range for this battle and depending on your class. Although Although some of your armor and weapon mods may favor certain abilities, they are no use for this fight if they put your life at risk or cause you to take significant amounts of damage. Not to mention these can always be changed after you're done with the fight. Alright so last I want to briefly cover the weakness again for this boss if you have not picked it up by now. The only weakness is on the abdomen of the Molten Akari which is shown right here. There are actually two spots that serve as shields to protect the underlying lava parts of the spider. When damaged these will slowly break apart and reveal lava under them. Now this is going to be the main target that you should be going for this entire fight until you get to the third stage in final form. If you hit the head or the legs you're bound to run out of ammo very quickly and of course not do as much damage thus extending the battle and thus increasing your odds that you may take the loss. 
if you have abilities unlocked that deal damage and are medium to long range, these would be perfect for targeting that abdomen spot. Now, of course, if you happen to reveal the lava on either spot, if you don't keep attacking it, the weakness spot will harden again and require you to break it off again. So if you can, try to focus as much as possible on these spots and keep consistent shots going at them. If done correctly, you'll notice that the first two stages of the Molten Akari fight are pretty simple, while the third takes a little longer just because there is no weakness spot, so it's just a hit and run tagging match at that point. All right, Outriders, so those are some very important tips for defeating the official second boss of the game, the Molten Akari. I do hope you found this video helpful, and if so, be sure to become a subscriber by tapping that subscribe button. If you do, I promise to provide some very, very helpful guides, tips, farming methods, and more very soon for the game. In the comments below, if you're still having troubles or have some better tips that would help others, just comment them and share, and if you're still having troubles, I'll try my best to help you out by replying to those comments. My name is Silverback. Our quest is complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.